<laughs> okay, right now we're going to be talking about electro an electrocardiogram. And that, that has to do with the electrical activity of the heart. Um, it's not like we plug ourselves into the wall and get recharged with electricity. The heart, the electricity produced by the heart is a combination of uh, influx of uh, sodium and uh, potassium and ions that are negatively charged and positively charged. And when they react, they react with each other, they produce an electrical dis discharge. The way the heart works is, the, the way the, the heart works and the way the blood moves through the heart is because of pressure and electricity. And what happens is that when the atriums are full of blood, the pressure is a little higher in the atriums that are in the ventricles. Because at that point, the ventricles are relaxing. They're in diastole. So by the atriums having a little bit more pressure than the ventricles, the mitral and tricuspid valve open. Okay, And some of that blood falls down. About 70% of the blood falls down into the ventricles. At that point, the, the pressure in the ventricles rise, and it makes the mitral and tricuspid valve semi-close because now the pressure in the ventricles is a little higher. But guess what? We still have 30% of blood in the atriums. And the atriums say, hey, hey, we're not done yet. We need to send this 30% of blood down. So what happens? Now you get an electrical discharge that goes through both atria. And by... Doing that electrical discharge is like when they put electricity on you, you get electric, you know, you get some electrical charge, you jump. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the with the atriums. As they get that electrical discharge, they contract. Okay? So the first thing that we're gonna get on the, an EKG is the P wave. And that P wave represents atrial contraction. Granted, it happens a little bit after the P wave because the electricity goes down and that's what makes a deflection on the EKG. But a little bit after, that's when it contracts, okay? Then the, uh, the electricity goes to the AV node, or atrioventricular node. And what happens there, there's a little pause. There's a little delay of that electricity before it goes into the ventricles. Why? Because now we wait, they're waiting for the ventricles to fill up completely and for the ventricles to start contracting. That area is called isovolumetric contraction in where the heart is getting kind of like mad, the ventricles. Once it reaches that point that the atrioventricular valves are closed and the heart is ready to eject, then the electricity goes down through the bundle of his. They should have called it the bundle of Samora. <laughs> <laughs> and then through the right and left bundle branches through the septum, and it, it spreads through the entire mass of the ventricles, through the Purkinje fibers, which are a whole bunch of little filaments, millions of them, and what that does is it makes it contract. So the atrias, it's kind of funny the way it works. The atrias open up kind of like because of pressure and gravity, and then the electricity comes back. But the ventricles, whoever made it say, no, we can't take the chance of sending a little bit of blood first and then the electricity. No, it kind of, the ventricles wait. When the pressure is at its maximum, then the electricity comes down and boom, is the blood is ejected out of the heart. When the electricity comes down through the uh, bundle of his and the bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers, what you get on the EKG is a deflection that is called the QRS complex, which is the, the spiky one, and that represents ventricular depolarization. And what happens is that the heart is, let's say, uh, negatively <coughs> charged, and all of a sudden it changes its, its charge to positive. So you are depolarizing. The pole was negative, now it's positive. So did you depolarize it? Now, it has to go back to being repolarized again because if not, how are you gonna depolarize it on the next beat? Mm -hmm. Then the T wave that goes comes after the QRS, that's ventricular repolarization in where it repolarized back to negative so it can be depolarized again in the same. In the atrias it happens too. You get a repolarization, but it's hidden in the QRS because it's not as strong as the ventricular repolarization. So we understand that part. Mm -hmm. So the EKG was um, invented in the early 1900s. They, a whole bunch of people were uh, working on it for years and years. Galvani, uh, uh, 
a whole bunch of different doctors and, and, and science that were working on, on the electrical activity of the heart and how to record it, but it wasn't until uh, the early 1900s when Ethoven discovered the EKG machine. He, he started messing around and he said, well, we can get an electrical uh, recording of the heart. And with years of study, they located where the pathologies in the heart happen through the EKG. They can detect infarctions, they can detect ischemia, they can detect hypertrophy, they can detect um, um, our, um, this, um, conduction abnormalities like heart blocks um, and different things that you should learn. I, can, I recommend all nurses and I recommend all students to really get with the rhythms because most of you, a lot of you are gonna work in the ICU, the CCU, cardiac care unit. You're gonna work in areas that you're gonna be in contact with the EKG. And at least the biggest arrhythmias you need to know, like ventricular free relation, ventricular tachycardia. You also need to know if the patient is infarcting. Because a lot of times, do you know what they used to do in the hospitals? They used to get the people that sweep the floors and clean the floor and say, we'll teach you how to do EKG. Because putting the leads, anybody can do it. My son can do it. But interpreting these EKGs is a different story. So these people, they were very good doing EKGs, but they didn't know how to read it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that the patient would have an infarct right there, acute MIs, and they couldn't read it. So then the patient died, and guess who came in? The attorney. Mm -hmm. And the attorney said, where's the EKG? But look, he was having an MI mm -hmm. who didn't read it properly. Why? He got to the doctor two hours later when my patient was, was dead already. So now you have to be a certified technician in order to do EKGs in the hospital but also nurses need to know this arrhythmias and they need to know this thing. It's not hard, it's a matter of repetition, repetition, repetition. And whenever you feel uh, you need, we'll give you a, um, a good course on EKG, a good review on EKG, and we'll help you out. Anybody here in the school is um, ready to give you a hand. So this is what is called a 12 lead EKG. Okay, and what we're doing, we're using 10 electrodes, but it's gonna take pictures from different sides of the heart and it's going to record it on a graph. So let's start putting this electro, um, electrodes uh, on the chest. The first electrodes that we're going to put, we can use the limb leads. The limb leads are limbs and we use one. Usually we clean the patient with alcohol so this sticks pretty good. If the patient have hairs, guess what? You're going to shave it because the hairs make it move and doctors don't like a lot of interference. That's why we the... choose Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> doctors don't like interference because the, the EKG is about little waves. And if you have a lot of interference, it's going to give you a diagnosis that is not good. Okay, so the doctors like to have a clean electrocardiogram. Um, I wish we had, give me one second and we'll get some alcohol. Okay. So you can see